Hello and welcome to MF Corner. I'm Sonal Bhutra in the Mumbai studio and today we discuss the flow picture in the entire MF space for the ongoing month. We of course know that the churn is happening with large caps getting their share of the pie back but few categories like liquid funds saw a dip in the previous month. As we run into a rate cut cycle, will we now see a substantial increase in debt flows or no? What is the difference between gross and net SIP inflows? And is it something to be worried of? All this and a lot more with Mohit Gang, CEO at Moneyfront, and Akhil Chaturvedi, Chief Business Officer at Motilal Oswal AMC, joining me today. Gentlemen, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining in today. And you know, uh, it's been a week that we got the numbers, and there have been a lot of ups and downs that we've seen. New categories seeing more flows, some of the categories seeing declines as well. Uh, Akhil, let me come across to you first up. Uh, what did you make of the fall in liquid funds and debt fund flows this month? What is the market reading here? If, is there any specific takeaway? Yeah, hi Sonal. Uh, so uh, certainly I think uh, I mean, it was better than uh, uh, June, July. Obviously, uh, June was negative because of advanced tax. Uh, August, we did uh, see a dip. Uh, couldn't really fathom uh, the real reason, but uh, probably it seems to be some tightness uh, of liquidity in the system, maybe because of uh, working capital requirement by the company. Uh, we also saw some uptick in the uh, money market side. So whether the money is moving on the extreme short end uh, of the of the uh, universe. Uh, so uh, I think it's more to do with the liquidity requirement of uh, businesses. Uh, uh, but otherwise, I couldn't really uh, gather what could be the real reason for such a sharp uh, fall. And this is a cross segment. So you look at ultra short, uh, liquid, money market, arbitrage, across segments, we have seen a uh, dip uh, compared to the previous month. Hmm, that's right. Uh, let's get in Mohit Gang in the conversation as well. Mohit, what did you make of the fall that we saw in debt funds and liquid funds this time around? Hi Sonal, always a pleasure to be on your show and uh, heartiest wishes on uh, Anand Chartodeshi to you and all your viewers. Uh, so look, as Akhil rightly mentioned, it's very difficult to pinpoint the reason for it. The only thing which we could uh, figure out in conversation with our large treasury clients is that uh, because they were parking only for a very interim period of 10, 15, 20 days and they were doing that parking in August, they needed the funds back in September for advanced tax payments. And that was one of the chief reasons uh, that they didn't park it for a tenor of uh, one month and above, which is where the liquid category typically uh, comes in. And also the overnight yields have been fairly sharp uh, off late. Uh, so my sense is it was more to do with that. And a few other parking categories also technically suffered uh, just by virtue of that reason. But otherwise, there was not a major reason. Liquid category still saw some positive flows, but the positive flows have dramatically dwindled uh, in the month of August. Okay, so there's nothing to worry about as such about the category right mm -hmm. now. Um, okay, let me come to you. The other category that saw funds flowing, coming down was the arbitrage, arbitrage category. And you know, this is something which had been doing well and we did see some pickup in flows there. Uh, is this a similar reason, a one-time impact that we have seen? What's your take? I would, uh, I mean, there could be possible two reasons. One reason is general tightness of liquidity, which I spoke about. The second could be perhaps, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, could be because of the tax impact, let's say, uh, you know, the capital gain going up by two and a half percent. Maybe that could be a small reason. So, but again, seems to be more uh, on account of tightness of liquidity. Okay. It could be one time. Okay, it's one time. Mohit, you agree with that view? Uh, primarily, yes. And also, I think the rollover spreads in the ARP category per se have not been very attractive uh, for the last couple of months. Uh, and uh, the returns have tapered off a bit. Now, with the increased taxation on the category, plus a little bit of spread comp compression because of the FNO uh, uh, taxes also going up, right? And the ARP uh, rollover spread not being very attractive. All of them uh, combined have uh, clubbed together along with what Akhil is mentioning. And I think that's primarily the reason. Okay, all right. So for both the categories, there's nothing really big to worry about. So that clarification really helps. Um, you know, uh, Mohit, let me come to you for this. We've been talking about net SIPs being lower than gross SIPs. Amphi has just issued clarifications on this as well. What really is the final picture here? Is this something investors should worry about? Is this a differential that any investor should look at at all? Or generally market rewatchers? 
Look, honestly, I think investors should only be worried about the market and the direction. They should not be worried about the net and cross uh, flows at all. I think that's for you, I, and the industry to worry about. And uh, yes, those are some telltale tiles, uh, signs on, on the overall uh, industry dynamics. Uh, as long as we uh, continue to uh, glorify the gross set numbers, I think that's a good story because that's uh, drawing more participation, larger number of investors, more and more tier two and tier three uh, 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 guys are moving towards financialization of their savings and starting that SIP, uh, basically. So that's that's all great, right? However, the net number is also alarming. It's dipped below 40% sonal. Uh, till date, if you see for last one year, the ratio of uh, gross, uh, net to gross was somewhere between 40 to 47, 50 odd percent range. For the first time in the month of August, it dipped 38%, which means if the gross flows were around 23,300 odd crores in the month of uh, July, the net flows was only 8,900 odd crores something, right? So there are a lot of SIP withdrawals which are happening from the existing SIP accounts, and that's primarily the reason. And that's been the more worrisome sign, honestly. So now, SIP is a great tool to have, but it's also a fairly long-term tool. The true results or true benefits of SIP only accrue once you hold it for 5, 10 years. For first few years, it's only a tool of accumulation. It's not a tool of making great amount of money. It only starts making great amount of money after five, seven years, and that's when the ultimate benefit of compounding kicks in. But if there are heavy withdrawals before that time frame, then honestly, those investors will never have great experience and they will never return back to starting new SIPs or enhancing their amounts in the SIPs. And that's more worrisome. And I think industry as a whole need to start some campaign around this that the SIP longevity uh, across the board improves. And I think that's a little worrisome. But yeah, as long as the gross number is growing and the net number also in absolute sense keeps increasing, I think we're reaching somewhere. Okay. So, Akhil, coming on that, so uh, as people who are reading the data, should one look at the net SIP number or the gross SIP number? And is gross going up positive enough uh, for the industry to take it in its stride? Yeah, so, uh, I would, uh, or I personally track the, uh, the net new number. So, I do look at uh, incrementally what is the SIP flow which is getting added month on month, which is typically in the range of uh, 1 and 2 percent. Now, uh, like Mohit is also talking about, uh, the gross SIPs have been increasing. So, if you look at the gross SIPs from April 2023 till now, uh, the gross SIPs number month on month has grown from 20 lakh new SIPs to today's 68 to 70 lakh new SIPs. So, that's a three, three and a half time jump in new investors, new SIP registration. So, that's a, that's a big positive. Now, if you look at net to gross, uh, typically, again, uh, the ratio has been more in the range of uh, 45 to 55 percent. This time, of course, last month somehow has dropped a little bit. Uh, but yet, uh, uh, we are adding net, uh, you know, 30 to 40 lakh SIPs every month, and uh, the net realized amount is also growing by about one one and a half percent every month. So, net net, uh, it's as long as it is moving in the positive trajectory, uh, it's a healthy sign. Now, what would be the reason of uh, the SIPs being stopped? Is it uh, that are they are investors stopping in one particular category, adding in another particular category, or whether they are actually losing hope on the market and discontinuing the SIP? Uh, you know, uh, uh, it, it could be various answers out there. But broadly, I, I feel that uh, as long as uh, uh, the SIPs are on a net basis going up incrementally month on month, quarter on quarter, I think that's a very, very healthy sign for a long term growth of the industry and long-term wealth creation for the investors. Okay, all right. That makes sense. And uh, both your views are well taken on the SIP contribution that we've been uh, seeing. Akhil, uh, one notable trend was large caps, they've made a confirmed comeback this time. I don't know if it's confirmed is the right word to use, but they have made a comeback. Are we seeing that in conversations with investors as well, that this trend would continue? Absolutely. So, I clearly can tell you that uh, it is us uh, at MO, we have been talking about large caps and flexi caps as we came into the current calendar year. So, January onwards, clearly you could figure out that mid caps and small caps have done really very well in the last three year period. Uh, investors have made a lot of money and incrementally given where the valuations are, it is extremely important for uh, people to revisit their asset allocation within the equities. So, uh, we have been talking about, uh, uh, you know, uh, re-looking at at uh, the asset allocation, re-looking at large caps, uh, or if still one wants a good mix of mid caps and small caps, then uh, you know flexi cap funds, large and mid cap funds, multi cap funds. I think there are you know broadly these four categories uh, where you can play a good mix of uh, large, mid, and small. 
you know, and it's always good that, uh, you know, incrementally when you are adding uh, new money, you are on the safer side of the market than the the hot side of the market. So clearly, uh, you know, it's a long drawn process. So when you start to talk about a certain thing, it takes a couple of months for it to actually, you know, come to effect. So the results of whatever we as an industry talking to investors, I think now we can see the results. I think this will improve uh, month on month. I think the the balance between mid cap, small caps in favor of large caps and flexi will tilt towards large and flexi going forward. It's been a while since we've seen that, right, Akhil? Uh, Mohit, uh, what's your take here now? Because even small caps and mid caps saw an improvement on a month-on-month -month basis this time. Do you think that's a secular trend or most of the money will go to large caps? Sonal, as much as I'd be glad to see more flows in the large cap, <laughs> okay, I'll still wait for the trend to confirm itself for a fairly uh, longish bit of time. Uh, honestly, we've been averaging 600 to 700 odd crores of flows in the category from 670 to 2700 odd crores in August. Uh, primarily is a great, great shift. It's a 4x uh, shift in the large cap allocation. But on absolute count, large cap still remains a smaller category in terms of fresh flows as compared to mid and small. Mid and small both were upwards of 3500 odd crores in the month of August, right? And uh, I think large cap category flow can also be primarily attributed to one of the large NFOs uh, garnering around 850, 860 odd crores in the month of August. Uh, but in spite of all that, I think there has been a lot of chatter around the market in the media, you and I and everyone uh, uh, speaking about uh, large cap valuations being still a little comfortable and uh, huge pockets of middle small cap being highly overvalued. So I think investor at large is also listening to all your shows and everything which is getting discussed and perhaps there is some shift happening. But as I said, I'll still wait for another couple of two, three months more to uh, watch this data out to finally frame an opinion. But yes, I think if that shift is happening, it's good for the industry and the investors both. Okay, so it's been a long time since we've seen that shift or the flows returning to large caps, right? We'll see which way things go. Uh, it's a very interesting and important discussion that we are having, but we have to take a quick break. On the other side, we'll continue our discussion with Mohit Gang and Akhil Chaturvedi, uh, all about the mutual fund data for the month of August and the trends going forward. Stay tuned for that. Welcome back. You're still tuned into MF Corner. We are discussing everything about the mutual fund data for the month of August. It's been a week, so we've had enough time to go through it as well and make analysis of different categories that have seen flows in a, diff in a, in a particular direction. We still have with us Mohit Gang and Akhil Chaturvedi, and they are giving us their expert advice on what could happen next and what the analysis could be. Uh, Mohit, let me come to you, because the big event that we are watching out for definitely has to be the... A possible rate cut by Fed tomorrow. But do you think if it does happen, it will lead to a reversal in debt fund flows and it will be very good for the debt mutual funds immediately? Sorry, my bad. I was on mute. Uh, so, the first things first, I think Indian investor is extremely sharp and uh, astute and we have been seeing uh, off late good positive flows in the long-term debt category. Right, And that is one category which will immensely and hugely benefit from any kind of rate cut. Though in anticipation of rate cut, I think the yields have eased off considerably both in US and in India. As I'm talking, I think the US 10-year is at around 3.6 and the Indian 10-year is at almost 7 point, uh, sorry, 6.86, right, or 6.87 thereabouts. So which is a dramatic reduction without any rate cut. Without any rate cut, we have seen the yields easing off considerably. And yes, it almost looks like a certainty. I'll be shocked and I think uh, equally the entire world will be surprised if the rate cuts don't come through uh, tonight. Uh, sorry, uh, tomorrow, uh, basically. So uh, I think everyone is baking in the 25 bips. Both the equity and the bond markets are baking in that. So at 25 bips, there is not too much of a surprise in store for anyone. Uh, but beyond that, if we get a 50 bips rate cut, then yes, I think that's an extremely positive thing, both for equities and bonds in the the short term but for bonds it's a hugely positive thing and uh, we have been repeatedly asking all our investors even on multiple shows we have discussed this before that for the investors who are fixed income investors and if they can spare a couple of years with their money then the long end of the curve which is the long-term debt funds whether we guild funds or income funds with long duration long maturities is something which will give them hugely uh, 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 what do you say uh, 
decent returns in the in, in couple of years because other than the accrual yield, you will also get the capital gains which will accrue because of the yields uh, uh, coming off, right? So typically investors can expect very high uh, returns. In fact, uh, low double digit returns are also possible in long end of the of the bond category. So uh, I think uh, it's a great category to be in right now. Okay. From a risk Great category to be in right now. Akhil, do you agree? I know uh, Motilal Oswal AMC doesn't have so much exposure to debt, but I just wanted to understand, is this a category you would look at or generally how do you look at this considering a possibility of a rate cut? So, Solar, the elementary understanding of fixed income is uh, as clear as what uh, Mohit has been talking about, that uh, if at all, uh, you know, you are in an environment where there are rate cuts in offering, then obviously it has an inverse relationship on the price of the bonds. So, uh, if we are getting into an era of uh, rate cuts, it will have a positive impact on the price. And uh, therefore, uh, you still have uh, some time available before actually the rate cuts start to happen, although some impact is visible on the, on the short-end yields. Uh, for people to lock lock themselves at higher yields, and then as the rate cuts happen, uh, the uh, possibility of making uh, reasonable double-digit returns or early double-digit returns is going to be a possibility in the next uh, couple of quarters. So uh, we are all uh, uh, extremely uh, hopeful uh, that uh, we see a rate cut today uh, from US, and uh, then we have to see how RBI reacts to it in the next uh, monetary policy committee, and then you know then we have to monitor the trend uh, going forward. But it, it's going to be a positive development. Certainly, looking forward to what comes from there. That's the big event, I'm sure. Uh, it's been it's been happening for a long of, lot of uh, long time, right? The anticipation, and we we do not see a rate cut. So let's see what happens. The markets have been quite choppy ahead of any decision that we have seen so far as well. Um, Akhil, I know, uh, you know, NFOs are something that uh, the industry is seeing a lot. We have seen that sudden surge which is happening in NFOs. Uh, we are seeing a sudden surge in sectoral uh, funds as well. Uh, what is the uh, strategy right now, if generally you can speak about the industry or fund managers or from a business perspective, uh, uh, do you think this is something that an investor should be wary of or do you think this is a safe space to invest in? I think so now the opportunity which India as a market is offering is phenomenal. I think uh, the way our economy is uh, growing, uh, the uh, the way that our macros are shaping up, the way the earnings growth has been uh, broad basing across uh, across sectors and across market cap buckets, across themes. Uh, I think uh, in uh, in medium to long term there are a lot of uh, emerging opportunities across the market segments, and there is where uh, thematic as a category got created that from from time to time whenever there are opportunities in uh, uh, certain themes uh, you know there are a set of investors who would like to participate in those themes and try to make that extra return uh, by giving some satellite allocation so what we are seeing in the industry and we ourselves are uh, trying to participate and uh, give that uh, product platform to investors uh, by giving the right uh, uh, sectoral or thematic opportunity from a 3 to 5 year perspective uh, you know for example I can talk about, let's say, manufacturing as a theme. Now, with all the Make in India initiatives and the reforms, of, uh, the PLI scheme, which is uh, which has been offered to the industry, uh, clearly there is a big push uh, for the manufacturing uh, to GDP, which is uh, for India currently at about 15%, uh, to try and match up with uh, some of the other emerging markets or some of the other Asian markets like China, Korea, etc., and you know take our manufacturing to GDP as an economy to about 20-25%. So so next five years, manufacturing, it's a very diversified space for one to participate. So that's an interesting theme. Uh, the uh, uh, power and the energy side, that's another in interesting theme. IT, digital, all of these are very, very interesting opportunities. You have good businesses, good ideas out here. Uh, so while I would always maintain that uh, investors need to have a core allocation towards uh, you know, basic plain vanilla funds, uh, more specifically the flexi cap funds, uh, but there's always room to give a 20-30% allocation to thematic opportunities, offshore international opportunities and diversify your portfolio across themes and benefit from that space, mm -hmm. which is what we are seeing in the industry and I think this will continue. Okay. Uh, I just want to clarify just one thing that NFOs seem to be, you know, uh, become talk of the town, but NFOs are not really a bad word. I mean, if you don't have a 
category, you know, you have to launch the fund. So I would agree with the school of thought that yes, uh, you know, there are certain set of investors or distributors who would want to see track record and then allocate. But then there are distributors and investors who are happy to come on day one. So uh, at least let's not uh, brand this as a, uh, you know, kind of a place to stay away from. <laughs> you know, there have been so much interest suddenly that everyone's become very cautious. But of course, as you said, investors are out there. Uh, I, NFOs are getting more bid than they've asked for. So that's the kind of market that we are in as well. Uh, thank you for your thoughts, though. Um, uh, Mohit, I have to come to you and ask you the basic question because I'm asking you because we are at record high on SIPs. We are seeing record high on markets. In that case, if someone has to start an SIP today, what is a good scheme or a uh, category for a long-term investor? Hybrids, multi-asset, pure large caps, etc. And in that, do you have any mutual fund names you can suggest? Perfect. Uh, so look, Sonal, uh, I think first things first, I'll just, just make a very small point on the NFO thing. I completely agree with uh, Akhil that all NFOs are not bad. However, uh, for investors, I have just one line of caution that everything that comes out of the cow is not milk. So you have to be extremely discerning in terms of figuring out uh, what is the right allocation and what is something which is missing in your portfolio and then go for it. Uh, as far as SIP allocations for long term are concerned, uh, look, I think a good SIP book is something which captures all market caps and all investing styles. So you have to have a healthy mix of large cap, mid cap, small cap, and you also have to have a healthy mix of investing styles which are momentum, quality, uh, value. Primarily these three, and I'm not getting into the other factors out here, but these three will capture the essence of the market, right? So uh, keeping that into consideration, today starting an SIP is extremely easy for an investor. SIPs are available easily at a 500 rupee ticket size. In fact, some of the schemes in the industry offer at 100 rupees also, and there are fewer 10 rupees also, right? So it is extremely comfortable for a retail investor to start SIP at any point in time with any kind of a ticket size, right? Few of the schemes, uh, to my mind, uh, uh, on the the large cap category, I'll go with a passive name, through ICIS and Nifty 50 index fund. Uh, then there is a large plus mid cap fund, which is a momentum style fund. I'll go with a UTI momentum 230 index fund. And uh, in the mid cap category, we can either go for a quality passive fund, which is a DSP mid cap 150 quality 50 index or a active passive uh, active fund, which is an Edelweiss mid cap. Even Motilal mid cap uh, uh, is an extremely good fund with a great performance. And on the small cap side, uh, we'll go with a active, which is a Bandhan small cap fund. So a mix of active passive and a mix of uh, all market caps and a mix of few factors out there. All right. Take that point, gentlemen. It was such an interesting discussion. Good to get both of your views as well. Thank you so much for joining in today. But with that, we'll take your leave on MF Corner. Stay tuned for Closing Bell to take you through the last hour of trade. Go powered by